Yeah, so the this is a kind of a retrospective of the last 30 years of me working and playing in the sand. <laughs> and um, it just plays off of the concept of what I'm doing, the technique of what I'm doing, the fact that we're starting with a positive mold and you stamp it into the sand, which creates the negative. And so I've been, that's the simplicity of the technique. So that's what I've been doing for 30 years. I've been playing in the sand in this way. The concept of positive reversals, you know, you can look at that as, you know, what's going on right now. You're taking a, a negative time and you're turning it around into a positive and looking at the fact that I've been very creative the last many months. Just some of the new work looks at positive and negative of certain aspects being so different. You know, the, the talking heads were have to do a lot with um, my look at relationships. Um, I've been together with my husband 26 years and relationships with people I work with, friends, and sometimes how different we are, how similar we are. My husband's from another country and looking at, you know, being so different in many ways, but yet we get along. When I learned the technique, the sand casting technique in New Orleans, Jean Koss, who was my professor, had learned of people experimenting with this technique in Sweden. And Bertil was, was one of the people that was experimenting. I don't know if he was the first, but he had heard about people taking sand and using it like metal casting techniques with glass. You know, his work for me is, is epitomizes what I like, which is very sculptural forms and shapes with a lot of meaning and significance to them. I really loved his communication. I love that he had a show as well this year and that I'm following it up because he for sure inspired how I work technically. You'll see in the show, I tried to show a lot of different bodies of work that I've done over the 30 years. I'm gonna be doing this butterfly wall, which will have 21 butterflies. And this is the first one that I've done of this type, wall-mounted, bracketed butterflies. Uh, the inspiration was originally from my, my two daughters when they were very young. They looked at all things flying and they were fascinated with flight. And it's definitely a, a spiritual, symbol of who we can become and change so on many levels it was it was really something that excited me so the buddhas will definitely be part of my show, upcoming show i have a whole wall of, of different types of buddhas it's definitely a cross-cultural concept and i try to do that i try to take different forms and shapes from other cultures and unite them into one sculpture so this has you know, de definitely Asian influences. Uh, it's a ha it could be a halo. Um, the Buddhas often had a halo adorning them. So this is just an abstracted concept. Why glass? You know, when I learned the technique that I use, it just clicked on so many levels. I'd always loved painting and I loved sculpting. But what I loved about glass and this technique was that it was virtually an unknown technique so i love the pioneering aspect where you're just figuring stuff out i love the adrenaline of this technique it's a group activity you need people to help you when i work in the mold it's very much just myself in the mold but then you have the aspect of glass which is so seductive you know it's just such a beautiful and spiritual material it's i think the the most unique of all the materials the way it plays with light so i just found that everything looks better in glass there's so much magic in this technique where things that you think are going to go one way end up going another way so there's so many happy accidents things that i can never do again this particular glass was from the czech republic it was recycled it was red and it has a little bit of gold in it. So depending on certain things, it maybe it'll come out red or maybe it'll come out gold or maybe it'll come out red and gold. And in this one piece, 
it, it came out red, gold, orange. It's just so unbelievable the way the glass reacted and I could never do that again. I really um, create an experience because what I've found over the years is that my collectors and I somehow connect on some level because they're responding to my artwork. And so I really like the people who respond to the work and we stay in touch. I, I would say it's been very difficult in many, many levels being a woman in a man's field. It's typically um, been male dominated. So when I learned this technique in the 80s, and it was just my calling, but all my ideas seemed to be really big, and I'm really small. So in order to achieve these ideas, I needed help. I needed people who were strong. I did have some strong women that helped me, tall, big women. But I just feel that to some degree I wasn't taken seriously in the beginning, you know, because the technique was unknown. And so when I would go to different glass studios and say, I want to pour molten glass into sand, you know, they would not really be excited about that because I was going to make a mess. How professional am I really? But I persisted. That's the thing is I just kept showing up and saying, okay, what do I need to do? Um, tell me what you need. I really want to do this. But it took a long time before I actually was able to do my work. Um, it took me almost a decade to figure it out. And I think it had a lot to do with the fact that I was not a man. So Imagine Museum will impact history because of this extensive collection. The fact that you're educating so many people about what's going on right now which you'll read in history books if it's not already there. Most people don't know all the wondrous things that you can do with glass. They might be aware of a Dale Chihuly, and that's about it. And that is one very specific technique and way that you can work in glass. But there are many other ways. And even within one other way, there might be 10 artists doing it in a different way. And you can see all that here at Imagine Museum. But I think most of the art that's at Imagine Museum is so unique to that artist. Like that artist's voice is so purely that artist. And you won't see anything like that artist anywhere else. My name is Marlena Rose, and this is Imagine Museum.